we go to the salon, we wanna go in there and get our best look. We wanna leave that place feeling fantastic. We wanna feel beautiful. And the dogs want the same experience. My name is Ana East Hayden, and I'm a creative stylist in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been creative grooming for 10 years and grooming for 16 years. I wanted to combine being able to do art with working with animals, so I've been blessed to be able to do that. I started with just grooming my own dog. I had no idea that it would inspire people to want tigers and zebras and giraffes and tie-dye. I did not see it going that far at all. I feel that if the dog matches who he is inside, his personality, his happiness, then that's really gonna let the color pop. It's really gonna bring out his personality even more and bring in all that attention that he deserves. If a dog is, for instance, shy, I feel like if I gave him a mohawk, that would give him more of a spunky attitude. You build his confidence. They understand that this is something good. It's gonna make them feel good. It's gonna make their families happy. So they look forward to it. There's nothing cruel about it. But I do try to stress that it's non-toxic, that it's safe, the dog enjoys it, and it's not harmful. I start the grooming process by thinking about what looks best on the dog, what suits the dog, what gives them the best personality. The grooming process can last between about three to six hours depending on how much I'm doing, how extensive it gets. When I did the fire dog, I wanted to do fire on that coat because the coat is darker. I think fire looks great against darker hair. So after I shaved him, I ended up doing the design with lightener. Just freehand, I wasn't sure exactly what it would look like, but I just knew I wanted the flames to look like they were whipping through. So after I did that, I rinsed. After the rinse, I dry him, and then I apply three colors. I did red, orange, and yellow, because that's the color of fire. And then I did a step-by-step, -step, starting with a small paintbrush, leading up to the bigger applicator brushes. I let that sit and I like to smooth it over with my hands to kind of make it blend in a little more natural. So I like the dye to dry. And then I took the dog to the tub, I rinsed the dog, and after I rinsed the dog, I dried the dog. And then did any little finishing touches such as the grooming, nails, ear plucking, and then the bling. dogs for the Atlanta Humane Society, just regular grooms and of course color. And there are a few dogs that need extra help, some that, you know, aren't getting adopted and you know, we don't want them to be euthanized. So of course, they come to me and say, is there anything you can do to this dog, anything creative? It doesn't always have to be dye, it can be body bling, it could be eyelashes, it could be feather extensions, it could be simple color, it doesn't always have to be extreme, but it does increase their chances of finding a home. It's my old man, Swinger. He's been the pioneer for all this. He put me on the map. If he didn't let me try these things on him, my clients never would have known about this. He's been dozens of designs. He's done the lupus walk. He's done the breast cancer walk. He's done anything we could possibly do around the city so people could know about creative grooming and to know that it's for a good cause, you know, for him to represent people that are sick, that means a lot, you know, so I'm very honored to be able to do this, not just for myself, but for the community. When I go out with my dog who's in color, everybody comes in droves. It's a crowd. It brings in so many people. And that's the part that I love the most, knowing all these people are smiling and laughing and, oh my God, that's hilarious. Can I get a picture? I can't believe it. How did you do this? It's overwhelming at times, but it's so great. 
The dog that has color on him is already carrying himself with all this confidence, all this pizzazz, all this happiness, and the other dogs feel that vibe, and they're curious. I don't believe they're colorblind. I believe they see it. I think they're like, oh my goodness, this is so cool. So we have a poodle named Leonard. He's creatively groomed. And we wake up every morning and giggle at him. She asked if she could have free reign, and I said, yeah, of course, and then he was a giraffe. <laughs> I, don't, I just thought it was great. It was amazing. The next steps to this is to get as many people to be okay with creative grooming. You're not going to win everyone over, but I want to win majority of the people over. I want them to know how beautiful this is, how wonderful it is. I want to keep making that impact on society. I don't want to stop doing this. I want to do this till I can't do it anymore. 